So here this night, this simple, simple benediction. And I can't ask anything greater for you. If I ask this night that you be, well, you name it, it would be, it would pale into nothing compared to this. If you wanted to be a billionaire, all right, a billionaire, and maybe you will leave it tomorrow for someone else to spend. And maybe you would want to be famous in this world and have all the papers talk about you, and your pictures, and then pay tomorrow. But this cannot pay. This is forever. So could I ask anything greater for anyone than this benediction and quote it sincerely, meaning for them. But he included all people in the world with you all, said he, as he closed the benediction. But tonight you can put it into the most practical manner and use it lovingly for everyone that you meet. Fall in love with anyone that you meet. Just fall in love with them. And then you don't have to meet them socially. You don't have to go out with them. Just love them because behind the mask there is your brother. Behind every mask is your brother who is in eternity. And you're going to do it for him. And so you embrace him here. And then one day our father will embrace him and he will become the father. He can't volunteer for it. He is running from it. The whole vast world is running from it. But the great lover will find them, one after the other. And when he finds them, in spite of their protest, he embraces them. And then, in the interval of time, that pregnancy lasts 30 years. They will bring forth a son. And then that son will only reveal to him who he is. And he will have confirmation of that 139 days later. He is the Father. And so when you read it, that he on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, he it is who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And so everyone incorporated into that body becomes the one who is doing the impregnation. For he is the Father. After incorporation, and then the birth from above, from that moment of the birth from above, he is part of that creative power of God, who is used in the impregnation. So that everyone is coming, one by one, and we all then be used in that one body, for there's only one body, one spirit, one Lord, one God and Father of all. For great poets, they tell this in their own marvelous way, and it's so hidden. I dare say that everyone present has seen Julius Caesar, and you read it. Those who went through high school, undoubtedly, you read Julius Caesar. But you have pictures. I know I've seen the play on Broadway a few times. I've seen it on the screen. And I had occasion to look up something in Julius Caesar this past week. And so I took my concordance on Shakespeare and it said I could find what I'm seeking in the first act, the second scene. So I started and then my eye fell upon a simple little speech of Caesar. And here, what we're talking about tonight, these are the words of Caesar as Shakespeare put them into Caesar's mouth. Forget not in your speed, Antonius, to touch Calpurnia. For our elders say, the baron touched in this holy chase, shake their sterile curse. They shake off their sterile curse. So, forget not in your speed, Antonius, to touch Calpurnia. Well, Calpurnia is Caesar's wife, the barren one. He was barren. So, do not fail to touch her, 
for our elders say that the baron touched in this holy chase shake off their sterile curse. But isn't that the student of the Bible? All great poets are students of the Bible. And they're inspired to tell it in their own way. And so here was this statement put into the mouth of Caesar. If you could but touch, well, the father touched me. And then my baroness came to an end for I brought forth the child. And he was simply taking the 54th chapter of Isaiah and putting it into his own wonderful words in the story of Caesar. Until the next time. Thank you.